Uh, welcome to the Deaf Fest uh, 2014 in Vienna. Um, I hope you're fresh and awake. And uh, first uh, presentation will be from Flora Dres about document-driven development. So I'm going to hand over to Flora. Thanks. Get some strange. Ah, it works. Awesome. All right. Uh, thank you for joining me for this first slot of the day and then on documentation writing, which is not necessarily uh, a developer darling, I would say. So I'm very curious who of you is the developer? Okay. Designer? Okay. Technical writer? Documentation writer? Awesome. Okay. That's good. Um, anyway, you made the right decision because, I mean, data analysis with Spark? <laughs> Nobody really wants this. Um, since I proposed my talk, uh, I changed my talk a little bit, so it's not necessarily on documentation writing, but more about README-driven development. Um, and README's have been with us for quite a long time, and even this term has already been coined by ex-GitHub CEO Tom Preston Werner. Uh, Preston Werner sorry. Um, so it has been with us for four years, so why am I talking about it today, right? Um, to make things clear, a README does not substitute documentation. It's not the same thing, and I will get into what it is exactly later on. But first of all, uh, who am I? I my name is Flor Dres. I moved from, uh, from the Netherlands to Vienna four years ago, and then the first seven months of this year, I spent working and living in Berlin. Uh, before I moved back uh, in July for, to take over Sector 5 co-working spaces in the 5th District, as its managing director, and for obvious other reasons. Um, I started to learn more about coding two and a half years ago. Uh, since then, I've organized four Rails Girls workshops, and I've co coached at a lot more of them all thro throughout Europe. Um, I organize um, workshops on HTML, CSS, Ruby, and Python, um, and I'm the, one of the core team members behind Rails Girls Summer of Code. Who of you knows Rails Girls Summer of Code? Have ever heard of it? It's a really great program that uh, helps Rails Girls students, um, like uh, Rails Girls alumni, to get into open source. Um, they get to spend three months of their summer working on open source projects and get paid for this. Um, so th this year we could support 10 teams uh, financially and then six teams uh, joined voluntarily. If you want to know more about Rails Girls Summer of Code, I can talk about this for hours, so catch me later. Um, I'm also the co-founder of the Vienna, Vienna RB, the Ruby user group in Vienna, and I've organized two conferences in Austria about web development. Why this is important, uh, I just want to show you that early on, even when I, when I was still learning, um, I was very interested in teaching other people and to create platforms for knowledge, ex uh, knowledge ex exchange when it comes to programming concepts. Um, and I found it very, very important that whenever I have a student that I'm only one or two levels above their level, um, because then if I've just, you know, come to grasp some sort of co a programming concept, it was so much easier to explain them how something works. Uh, I find that, that a lot of my fellow coaches who have been programming maybe since they were 12 uh, have a lot of difficulties leveling down their lingo and trying to come up with examples that actually make sense to their students. But back to the topic. Um, I've been working as a technical documentation writer for quite some time, um, and also at my last job, and uh, I think that my interest for readme-driven development and documentation writing uh, has to, a lot to do with that. Uh, has a lot to do with you know, me wanting to connect and to explain concepts. So, now let's really get into the topic. Um, the problem is, is that we, only, we often only start writing our documentation or our README when we have already finished our application or our app fu functionality. And instead, if you start with writing down the requirements and uh, potential use cases, the whole documentation writing moves away from being something that is very painful and sort of last minute um, into something that can be a vital part of developing your project. <coughs> Uh, and especially because you already write, write down the, the requirements beforehand, you make sure that you don't feature freak or build unnecessary stuff. Which leaves, of course, more time for writing smarter software and especially writing all the rubies. Um, a problem that I find with a lot of popular development pro, um, approaches is that there's 
very little time for design. Um, whereas I think that in development, design and development should be somehow on the same level. Um, and oftentimes in the more agile approaches, design is absolutely not a topic, uh, which leads to a lot of projects that are sloppy and fastly made and have no or very little documentation. And I think that RDD brings back this design element, luckily. Um, so whenever I talk about readmes or, or documentation, people will ask me about how this sort of relates to uh, using BDD as in behavior-driven development or business-driven development. I think that if, you're, if you start writing with your, document, your documentation early on, you're very honest about you know, what your project is going to be about. And it's crystal clear to you and all of the stakeholders what your project will be about, what it solves, and what the use cases are. Um, so in that case, it does fit very well into BDD as, for instance, when you're using Cucumber, of course, I, I, I'm, I'm not allowed to use any code slides because I wanted to, you know, show you some Ruby and the organizer said no. So <laughs> it should be sort of all languages. But if you write down your requirements in, uh, and your specs in, in Cucumber, it's already quite easy to read, right? It's plain English, basically. Um, and um, RDD should be really considered as a sort of a light version of documentation-driven development. Um, I think that documentation-driven development can be very verbous. I mean, you, you often write way too much. Um, and a readme should be considered as an introduction to your code uh, rather than a whole documentation. Um, much like when you write your first test, um, when you start with writing a README, as said, you're very clear about what, what your project is going to do and how it's going to solve a problem. So you can detect complexity early on in the process. Um, I remember when I write, wrote my first automated test, um, that is that I caught errors that otherwise would have slipped into my code, but I could catch them early on just by writing a test. Writing a README is somehow like that. Um, what I do often, uh, or what I try to, to strive by is to also write my issues like I would write uh, my documentation. The, the great thing about this is that you are really clear about whatever bug you're trying to report or a feature that you wa want to suggest. Um, and by being so, um, being so detailed, even if I don't have the time to implement such a thing, because of the information that I provided, someone else is, it, it has an easier time implementing this. If there's one thing that I want you to take away from this talk is that you write your README first. When you start a new project, start with that. Before you run your scaffolds, before you write your formatting, start with a README and describe what your project will be about, what it will solve, and what the use cases are. As said, I, I really despise whenever people say, yeah, but there's no time for this because we have you know, an agile process in our team and we want to push out code as fast as possible. That makes for very sloppy code, usually, usually, if you're honest with yourself. If your software solves a problem that nobody actually has, or nobody can figure out how to use it, your software is basically useless. So please spend some more time on writing that with me. So I really want you to write one, right? So I should maybe give you some benefits maybe you can, can relate to. <coughs> Writing a README allows you to think through the project uh, without you know, the overhead of you having to change code every time that you change your mind about your project. Um, second of all, if you start with writing your, your README or if you're writing your README or your documentation while you're coding, um, actually, it, you have a nice piece of reference which will, in time, will become your, your, your documentation. Free pro tip. Um, I keep my README open at all times whenever I'm, I'm working on a project as one of the very few files. So whenever I find that, for instance, only one version of a gem works with my project, I can write it down right away. Instead of after, you know, after the whole fact, having to look up in my gem file which gem specifically I used. 
and doing this for all, all parts of the, of the application. Then writing a readme or documentation, as said, afterwards is an, a complete drag. You have no idea through what, which pains you've, you've gone and maybe through which pains the user of your project will, will go to make it work. Um, it takes a lot of time and usually when you start a project you're all fresh and you know, excited about this and it's way easier to write uh, what your, your program is doing than afterwards. Slightly related, when you already have your README, your coworkers can start working on, on applications or pieces of code that interact with your project uh, without you having uh, already read or uh, wrote a single line of code. Um, with the bonus feature is that no team is sit just sitting there being pretty. Um, the, the client team can already start uh, working on code that interacts with yours before the, the server team has even you know, started to write something. And then you have a lot less time spent on you know, merging your projects together or finding some adaptation so that it works together. We're all human beings and communication is a really, really difficult thing um, in, all se in all senses and also uh, oftentimes related to language. If you have something written down, it's way easier to discuss about your project than when you would have to explain every tiny little bit over and over again to every one of your stakeholders. When you're designing an API, you there are a lot of unknowns. You don't necessarily know who's gonna use your project or your, your software later on. You don't know how exactly they will use it, what the specific value of your software will be, how their, their flow through your API will be. So it's very smart to, to write this readme first and have a high level overview of what your project is about, what your software is about. It also helps you to gather feedback early on uh, on your project and then all throughout the project. And then, I mean, it's Markdown. It's not like it's a whole new language. So it's not that difficult, right? A personal favorite, um, whoever is using GitHub knows this. Um, your README is just there along with you know, your version code. Um, so people can get it straight into the project right away. And of course, it's totally open source compatible because you could write in your, your README and it's very you know, recommended um, how people can report issues. Uh, should they go to the, the GitHub issues or do you have a mailing list where you want to collect your problems over? Uh, plus, you can also write um, how you want people to collaborate on your project. Um, do you want them to fork the project? Do you want to, them to clone it and make a branch? And if so, what is the naming convention for this branch? Very easy to write this down. Might you already have a project and you're thinking about uh, implementing RDD um, and you're already using something like BDD or TDD, um, it's as easy as you know, just adding one step. You change something into your documentation, then you write a test that fails, of course. Then you write the code that makes this test run, um, and then, of course, you refactor. So it's just one simple step. I have five more minutes. Okay, that's good to know. Um, well, I think it's smart to make it a required first step so that everyone is on the same page and every, every team member does exactly the same. Um, and then uh, also include your documentation writing in your already if you already have a workflow of co code reviews, which I really hope you have, then also include this as part of your code reviews. To be, of course, completely unbiased, there is also some pitfalls when it comes to uh, RDD, uh, which you should be aware of, um, is that RDD or DDD is just like behavior-driven development or whatever driven development. Um, it's just an overgeneralization of a really good idea. You have to find a way that it fits into your team you cannot force probably everyone to write documentation. Maybe people have really problems with this and maybe you should find someone like me, I'm for hire, um, to help you with writing documentation. That's totally fine. 
What I see that happens often is that people write their README as a science fiction novel. So this project will solve problem X in this way, while you haven't you have actually no idea if it will solve that problem in that way. Um, make sure that you're very honest in your README because chances are is that you're going to abandon this project and it's going to lie somewhere in GitHub and you know someone's going to touch it and they're, they read the README first and they're very, very sad to figure out that you know it's not really what it's promised. As said, it's not a substitute for uh, proper documentation. Don't use this as an excuse for not writing documentation. And if I'm talking about readmes all the time, I should maybe give you some pointers about what makes a really good readme. Um, first of all, it should really describe your project. Um, in, and as a starting line, for instance, if you wrote a gem uh, to include Bitcoin payments in your Rails application, it should say <laughs> gem to implement Bitcoin in your Rails application and then a small introduction. Make sure that it sticks a little bit. Don't make this too long. It should be really short. Then chances are that is that uh, whoever is viewing your project will view this in a browser. So make sure that it's compatible as such. So it has some subtitles uh, and it has some, some syntax highlighting whenever you provide code samples. And about those code samples, developers love code samples. So if you have any uh, examples of how your project inter or interacts with some kind of library um, or with a popular project, then make sure that you show this. Very important is to list who the maintainers are, if I can, can get in touch with them if I have any questions, uh, what the community platforms are, so do you have a mailing list or do you have an IRC channel, um, how can I uh, report bugs, as said before, or uh, feature requests? Um, licensing details, of course, and how can people contribute to your project? Uh, also mentioned before, it's very, very important to be honest about your project. If you know of any cases where your project doesn't work with something or might break a lot of things, <laughs> let people know or offer workarounds. People will be very disappointed when they have, you know, they cannot work with your code. And especially, it's also for you actually, because you don't want to answer the same issue over and over again of people that have the same sort of problem. There is this thing with Code Climate and Travis, they have sort of badges to show you if your build is green. Um, it's very pretty, but make sure that it's actually like your build is green. It looks really sad when all of the badges are completely red. If you're interested, there's two more, two articles that you should definitely check out. I will tweet them later so you don't have to write it down. The first is uh, the first article in which Tom uh, explains what readme-driven development in his mind is. And then the second is from a company who actually implemented RDD uh, and shows you what their, what their pitfalls and their benefits were. Thank you. I made it in time. <laughs> We got five minutes for questions. Okay, so how how should it be sort of formatted? Like what's first? So what's what's first of of course like really make sh make sure that you make use of the formatting so that you know you really have your your top priority up uh, completely up. Start with an introduction. What does your your uh, application software whatever what does it solve? What is the intended use case? Um, uh, document the installation process and uh, give some example uses of of your code. Um, then later on you can talk about you know who the maintainers are, licensing, and, and how people can um, con uh, report issues or uh, contribute to your project. I think that would be like the order 
Ja. Yeah, that's a very important point actually. Like it's very it's very important for if you want to have newbies beginning Oh my god. Um, first of all, to keep it up to date, uh, I usually have my README open all the time so I can just add to it whenever I, I see any complexity or anything that, um, that changes whatever I've stated before. Uh, so whenever I figure out that, you know, I, I think it will work this way and it will not work this way, I will change that directly. So that's maybe easy to always keep that one open. Um, I do know some complete RDD freaks who <laughs> write their documentation so it's executable as a test. Uh, so yes, this does exist. Uh, it's a whole, whole different scope though, but sure. If you're a good team member, I think that would be very smart, not only for yourself, but also for people that will come to the project in, in future times, because it's, it's an absolute drag when you get presented some legacy code uh, and you have no idea how to work with it. Uh, better fix it yourself than have other